Welcome back. We're starting a new segment today called Set for Life with Nick Sapienza. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Absolutely. Good so to be you're, back. So you're helping us. I know. It's been a while since yeah. you've been here. It's been like three or four years yes, since, well, since we first started. We're happy that you're back. You yeah. are helping us kind of be more savvy with our finances, specifically yeah. today, investing. So mm -hmm. I think people hear investing and they automatically get overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. So how can people start investing smartly? That's a good question. And it's it's noisy out there right now and it's only gotten noisier mm -hmm. over time. So it's hard to figure out like who you should listen to, what you should do and how do you know if you're on track. But really the first thing that, the first place that you want to start is understanding or deciding what your goals and objectives are. Okay. So like you're saving money for a reason, right? You go to work every day mm -hmm. because and you save money and you, you, you have a specific purpose for that. But what is it specifically and, and why is it that way? And really mm -hmm. continuing to ask those questions like why is this important to you and why is that your specific goal uh, is, is probably the most important thing that you can start with. So okay. once you have that figured out, you know exactly why you're doing everything that you're doing on a daily basis, the sacrifices you're making, it makes it much easier to stick with, right? You mm -hmm. have this outcome that you're striving for. The very best first thing that you can do here is just take an inventory. So what are your assets, income, liabilities? How much do you spend on average mm -hmm. maybe per month? And then that's the quantitative side. The qualitative side are going back to those goals and objectives. What are they? Why mm -hmm. are they this way? And, and your beliefs maybe around money and the psychology of it all is really important. I compare yeah. this often to like dieting. Right? Okay. So it's really more about when you're changing your finances, you want to look at it as a lifestyle change. Focus on principles and less on maybe like tactics and hacks. Okay. So we want to take that inventory today. We want to say, okay, based on what I'm currently doing, like I have X amount saved and I'm saving X amount per year or investing that, where am I going to end up maybe 20 or 30 years mm -hmm. from now? And is that where I actually want to be? So it's really the most important thing that you can do today is just take a snapshot and say, is what we're doing today, like, are we going to end up where we should be based on yeah. those, those current inputs? That's great advice. It's a really great way to look at it, too, is that diet analogy. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are kind of calculating everything and trying to figure out everything, what's the best way? Should they just write it down, a spreadsheet? Like, what's your best tips in regards to figuring out, okay. Where am I? Yeah. Or where am I going to be? Yeah. So, like, which, which path are you on, right? You're, you're on that trajectory. The best way is probably, the simplest way, is just to use a future value calculator with contributions. If you Google that, it'll spit out, like, 20 of them. Okay. I use financial planning software, but that's a good head start is just to put, here's what I currently have saved in, like, my 401k, and here's how much I save per year. And if I average, say, you know, 7% a year for the next 25 years, I'll have X amount whenever I go to retire. Mm -hmm. And then is that going to be enough? Mm -hmm. Now, the way to get to that number is, you know, what is it, what is it going to cost for you to live comfortably at that time? Mm -hmm. Like, is it 5000 a month? Is it 10000 a month? Do you want, like, an extra cushion there? And, and you can work that number backwards to say, like, back of the napkin math. If I need to spend $10,000 a month 30 years from now, then I need to have about three million bucks, mm -hmm. okay? And it can seem unfathomable to look at that amount of money, but really when you run the numbers again and you look at it, just the simple act of saving, you know, 10, 15 grand mm -hmm. a year, averaging 7% a year, it's really time that's gonna solve, pull the rest of its weight for you. I love that we are starting this conversation. Thank you so much for coming on yeah, to course. kind of break this down. We're going to continue this series, so I hope you guys at home are ready for it. If you do want to rewatch this, head to our website, klaf.com. Everything you need is right there. Let's check in with Adam Olivier.